In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to extract Fallout 4 audio files so that they're usable in crossover. The first part of this process is to create a Windows 7 64-bit bottle in crossover. Since I already have a working Fallout 4 bottle, I'm going to create a new one called Fallout 4 Test just to demonstrate how to install the proper components. Before continuing, I want to give a warning. This process may take an hour or longer, sometimes several hours, if you want to extract all of the Fallout 4 audio files. There, now our bottle is set up and ready to go. The next part of the process is to install Fallout 4 and Steam into the correct bottle. You'll right-click on the bottle and select the Install Windows Software option. You'll need to type in Fallout 4 and find it from the selection, and then click Continue. Crossover will then install Fallout 4 along with some required files that it needs. If anything pops up on your screen, you'll want to click Install, Yes, or Continue. If necessary, click Start and agree to any license agreements that are required. Here, Steam is starting the process of setting itself up. Just need to wait for this to complete, and then Steam will be ready to go. At this prompt, you'll want to select Login to an existing account and enter your login information for Steam. Once that's done, Fallout 4 will start installing itself. In order to extract the required Fallout 4 files, we're going to use a tool called Yakitori. Yakitori requires that .NET 4.6.1 be installed, so we're going to go ahead and install that in the crossover bottle we just created. As part of this process, .NET 2.0, a 2.0 service pack, 4.0 and 4.6.1 will be installed. When you go through these prompts, you'll need to accept any agreements and click Next in order to continue. All of these support files are required for Yakitori to run. If prompted to restart, just click Restart Now. This will not restart your Mac, it will simply restart the bottle. Once .NET is installed, it's time to go to the Nexus Mod site and go ahead and download Yakitori and the BAE Extractor tool. In order to download these tools, you do need a Nexus account, but you do not need to pay for premium access. Both of these files are fairly small and shouldn't cause any problems downloading. Once you're at the appropriate page, go ahead and click the Manual Download button. Your browser will then download the required files to your Downloads folder as an archive. From there, you will need to go ahead and use a tool like the Archive tool built into Mac OS or some other tool like Unreal Archiver. Once the files are decompressed, go ahead and move them to your desktop. We'll be using the desktop in this example, but you can move them to other locations if you need to. No particular setup is required for these applications. We are simply going to use the Run command option from within our Fallout 4 bottle in order to execute the necessary commands. Here we're selecting the desktop on the left pane and then going to the BAE tool in its subfolder, and then clicking the Run. You can also click Save Command as a launcher in order to create a permanent shortcut within your bottle to access the tools if you need it later. Here we can see the Extractor tool is opened up here and working properly. So now we're going to continue with loading Yakitori. Now we're going to test Yakitori to make sure it works properly. We're going to go ahead and browse for it from within the Run Command option in Crossover and navigate to our desktop find the subfolder on the desktop, and then choose the Yakitori application. Just click Run, and it should pop up in just a moment, and there it is. Now that we know Yakitori works, it's time to extract Fallout 4's audio files. We will be launching Yakitori and navigating to the folder where Fallout 4 is installed. I have my Steam library on an external drive, so that is where I'll need to go. 
Selecting the correct options in Yakitori is very important. Here we are selecting .fuz and .xwm files as the input format. For output format, we want to select .wav files, and then also select Same as Input folder, Overwrite, and Create subfolders. For max threads, I will recommend 7 threads for the base model M1. Please note that once these files are extracted, they will take up an extraordinary amount of space. Extracting every single audio file from Fallout and the DLCs takes up about 64 gigs of data space. So make sure you have adequate space on whichever device you're extracting the files. To actually start the extraction process, we'll need to start with File Open from the Yakitori menu, and then navigate to your Fallout directory. Here, again, I'm on a, an external drive as my Steam library is hooked up to an external device. You'll need to change the default file format to .ba2 in order to see the files. Once you can see the archive files, go ahead and select the Voices file, or Fallout 4 dash Voices, I should say, and then click Open. This will begin scanning that file for all the audio files inside of it. Now this takes a while, so it will take about 10 minutes or so for it in order to enumerate all the internal files in that archive. Once it's done, you'll see a list appear on this window. To assist in locating these files, I'll put the default file locations in the notes in the video description. Once the list does appear, all you need to do is click on the Convert button, and the Yakitori will begin the process of extracting and converting the internal audio files into a format that Crossover can actually render into audio that you'll hear in the game. The Voices file simply contains the voices of the NPCs and the player character, but does not include other audio files like weapon effects, or footsteps, or wind noises, or other ambient sounds. In order to hear those ambient noises in-game, you'll need to run Yakitori on each .ba2 archive. I recommend starting with the archives whose names start with Fallout, as these will contain the audio files for the vanilla game. In order to get audio for the DLCs, you will also need to run Yakitori on each DLC archive. This can be an extremely time-consuming process. Therefore, I recommend sticking to the Fallout 4 Voices and Fallout 4 Sounds archives to begin with. If the missing noises bother you, or you start playing one of the DLCs, you'll need to extract the audio from the DLC or vanilla archives with Yakitori. The other tool I downloaded, BAE Extractor, can scan archives much more quickly than Yakitori, and is useful for browsing the archives quickly. If an archive has no .xwm or .fuz files in it, then it can safely be skipped. The next step is to verify that the files were properly extracted. Here I've extracted the Voices archive, and I'm going through the files in the Fallout 4 directory under Fallout 4, Data, and then there will be Sound and Music folders. These will contain the audio files that you just extracted. If you go through these and look, you will see .wav and .lip files. The .lip files are lip sync files, and if these files are missing, the NPCs will not be able to move their lips in sync with the audio. The last tool we're going to use is something called Bethany. Bethany will allow us to quickly configure Fallout Forward in order to use the loose files that we just dumped in the data directory. Once we've correctly configured it, it will be able to play those .wav files instead of the internal .xwm and .fuz files that are in the archives. Once Bethany is extracted to your desktop or other location, go ahead and use the run command and crossover to run Bethany. You'll want to do this from within the Fallout 4 bottle. Once it loads up, it should automatically detect your config files and need no additional configuration. Here you can see Bethany displaying the Fallout 4 configuration, including the name of the game and the file location. On the basic tab, we will want to select Bethany Presets, as well as Recommended Tweaks. Notice that this checks the Load Loose Files box. This needs to be set so that Fallout can find the audio files we've just extracted. Once that's done, make sure to click the Low box, and then we'll edit some of the other parameters manually. Here I've selected the NPCs use ammo, which is purely optional. And just in case the audio extraction doesn't work, it's a good idea to select the subtitles options. And here we will want to deselect God Rays and Depth of Field. Both options are very resource intensive and can cause your frame rates to drop significantly. Here I'm adjusting the draw distance to 5 on each category in order to ensure that things don't pop up in right in front of me.
Once you've completed checking all the necessary options, go ahead and click Save and Exit, but first make sure that Load Loose Files is checked. Now it's gone ahead and generated the config files to run Fallout 4, and now we're going to test it next to see if these extracted files work properly. Hey. Yes, human. Got a second, big guy? Speak! How are you feeling about things? Words on machines, words on papers. Strong not understand why humans like words so much. That was it. What's the Spray matter? Halen. Don't have you the guts to join up? You should reconsider joining the Brotherhood of Steel. We need people like you. There's still a place for you in the Brotherhood. If you want it. I still want to think about it. Suit yourself. You know where to find us when you're ready to make a decision. <laughs> 